definition and interpretation section 2 deals with definition and interpretation and if you look at section 2 section 2 classifies definitions into different forms though the classification is not readily available when you read it but section 2 does have different classifications so if you classify the definitions in section 2 uh, we have already done that you will see that section 2 has at least seven different types of definition the classification of definitions is not something that is apparent in the act but if you read section 2 you will find at least seven different types of definition the first definition is something that is defined in another chapter this is one type of definition when i say type sometimes it's just one single entity or sometimes it's a group of definitions which fall within this category the first category is something that is defined in another chapter section 2 begins with the preamble in this act unless the context otherwise requires now this is important which means if in a different context it can have a different meaning so whatever is explained here could have a different meaning in another chapter now we'll see an instance of that where something has been defined in section 2 like exclusive license and you all know this definition an exclusive license section 21f defines it as a license from a patentee which confers on the licensee or on the licensee and persons authorized by him to the exclusion of all other persons including the patentee which means this definition exclusive license does not include the patentee exclusion of all other persons including the patentee according to this definition under 21f the patentee and the exclusive licensee are not one and the same in this context but what did the preamble say unless context otherwise requires so if the context requires the patentee and the exclusive licensee to be the same person you will find that being mentioned in another place okay Similarly, now we just mentioned patentee. Patentee, you will find that a patentee means a person for the time being entered on the register as the grantee or proprietor of the patent. It does not say the patentee includes an exclusive licensee because the definitions under section 2 give a particular general definition. But what does the preamble say? Unless the context otherwise requires. So if the context requires otherwise, then you will have to move. So look at the definition of section 21F, which says exclusive licensee to exclude the patentee. And look at the definition of section 21P, which defines patentee as not including an exclusive licensee. When you look at chapter 16, specifically section 82, there is a new set of definitions there. Definitions of patented article and patentee. And in that section, in section 82, when you look at subsection B, it says patentee includes an exclusive licensee. Now, this is important for us to understand because section 2, though it has general definitions, where a context requires otherwise, this definition will not be applicable. So, from this we understand the definition of patentee in section 21P and the definition of exclusive license which also includes exclusive licensee in section 21F will take a different meaning when it comes to chapter 16, which is on compulsory licenses. And that we find in 82. Okay, so you need to understand that the first type of definition is where you find the definition in another chapter. It is defined in another chapter. So the, the concept of an exclusive licensee and patentee takes a special meaning when it comes to the chapter of compulsory license. So this is the first type of classification. The second type of classification is it is defined in another section. Now if you look at section 21A, appellate board. Appellate board means the appellate board referred in section 116. So 116, so the definition section 2 takes you back to section 116. And 116, we know that 116.1 states that Subject to the provisions of this act, the appellate board established under section 83 of the Trademarks Act 1999. So you need to understand that the appellate board is not defined within the Patents Act. It is actually defined 
in the Trademarks Act 1999 because the appellate board is a common appellate board for trademarks, copyright and for patents, designs, geographical indications, all the IP. And you find that it was first created in 1999. The patent function started operating only after the Novartis case. And if you know the Novartis case, there was a reference that was made by the court to transfer a part of the case to the IPAP, which was specially constituted, a bench was specially constituted to take the Novartis case because Novartis case was the first appeal from the patent office to the appellate board and they had to uh, make arrangements to function or put the IPAB into the functional mode. So you find that happening after the Novartis case. So this is the second type defined in another section and 116 is a good example of that. Similarly, you will find uh, section 21B controller means the controller general of patent designs and trademarks referred to in section 73. Again, it takes you back to another section where you can get the full idea about it. So the second type of classification is defined in another section. The third type of classification, one of the uh, types of definition is it is defined in another treaty. Know that the Patents Act is an act which has to conform to certain international standards and the international standards are found in the TRIPS agreement, which is a part of the World Trade Organization, WTO. The TRIPS stands for Trade Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights. Now, this was an agreement into which India entered in 1995. India is a founding member of WTO. But because of certain uh, provisions in the TRIPS, India was able to get an extended time for implementing the amendments to the uh, Patents Act. So we took a 10 year transition period and that is why you find three amendments 1999, 2002 and 2005. Only after the 2005 amendment, Patents Amendment Act, did the Indian law fully comply with TRIPS, TRIPS agreement. So we took a 10 year time period to bring the compliance. So you find certain things defined in the Act which will take you back to another treaty okay it will be an international treaty so you find such a definition in section 21 aba the budapest treaty means the budapest treaty on the international recognition of the deposit of microorganisms for the purposes of patent procedure okay so you find that the treaty here has refers you to another treaty which has its own setup which has its own regulations parties who have ratified it and all that so this is the third classification in the definitions that we have and you'll see that section 10 is the relevant section so you'll find that in our bar act wherever there is a relevant thing we give the reference in the margin now the fourth kind of definition is what is defined in another act so we already found saw that the intellectual property appellate board is not actually defined in the patents act it's defined in the trademarks act so you find reference to such definitions as well in section 2. Now district court for instance has the meaning assigned to that expression by the code of civil procedure what we call CPC. So district court is not defined in the act but there is a reference to another act which essentially means that to have to understand the uh, full impact of the definition you will have to read that particular provision. The fifth type of classification is defined in the patents act. Now, when we say defined in the Patents Act, it has a commonly understood meaning, but it takes a specific meaning in the Patents Act because it is specially defined in the Patents Act. Now, if you look at the definition of High Court, that is Section 21I, in relation to the state or union territory means the High Court having territorial jurisdiction in that state or union territory as the case may be. Now, you don't find this definition in the Constitution which defines High Courts. You know, the Constitution of India which enumerates the powers and functions of the High Court, you don't find this definition. This is specifically defined for the Patents Act for a reason. And the reason we have shown it here, Section 104 is the reason. Because the High Court and the District Court are the courts where you can file infringement suits. And the section 104 very clearly says that if a defense of invalidity is raised, then even if the case is filed in the district court, it has to be transferred to the high court. So high court, we understand it as in this definition and it's a special requirement because the power of the high court is different from the power of the district court under the Patents Act. The sixth type of classification is defined with reference to a treaty. 
Now, you may say that this is the same as defined in a treaty, but the Patent Act, Patents Act for whatever reason, defines it in a slightly different way. Now, you will find this in Section 21 IA, International Application means an application for a patent made in accordance with the Patent Cooperation Treaty. Because international application is not defined there. It doesn't say that it is an application as defined in the Patent PCT, Patent Cooperation Treaty. It just says that it's an application made in accordance with. So it's a reference to an entire different system. You know that PCT is a different system which operates within the Indian Patent Office. It's a different system. So it has reference to another system. So you find this kind of a definition saying that uh, application that is made in accordance with the Patent Cooperation Treaty. Now this is the sixth type or sixth type of definition. The last type is what we call defined but not used in the Act. Defined but not used in the Act, for instance, Section 21L, New Invention. You have the definition of New Invention, but New Invention in itself is not used anywhere. Okay, invention, there's a definition, but new invention, these two words together, is not used anyway. Now that raises the question, then why did the Patent Act define it in the first place? Now, this is where again, the cross-references are going to help you. Okay, you find cross-references in uh, section 13 and section 29 uh, to 34, which we will, uh, we will explain that in detail. You also find a similar definition in section 21TA, pharmaceutical substance means an entity involving one or more inventive step. Pharmaceutical substance is not used anywhere in the Patents Act, though it is defined. Now, you may get this question in your mind. Then, what is the point of having this? Now, the point of having these definitions are mentioned in the margin, if you can see it here. Now, for the purpose of section 13, where a novelty search is done, and sections 29 to 34, which describes anticipation. This is the guiding definition. Now, what you are looking at as new invention is the definition of novelty and the definition of how you will prove anticipation. Now, have a close look at this because novelty is not defined in the Act. This was a rather an indirect way of introducing the definition of novelty into the Act. So, new definition is actually the definition of novelty which you can, you can see that has not been anticipated. So it is the, the, how do you apply anticipation by using this concept, what has been mentioned here. Uh, section 13, which the way the Patent Office does a novelty test and section 29 to 34 are the relevant sections where this concept is applied. So you could still use, especially if you are arguing before the Patent Office or in a court of law, you could still use this definition. Yes, the definition could not have been uh, mentioned in the other parts of the Act, but still the concept can be used because it is a part of the Act. Similarly, pharmaceutical substance, though Section 3D does not talk about pharmaceuticals, it generally talks about known substances. Uh, so you could still understand a known substance as something which if it deserves a patent, then it should have at least one or more inventive step. How that plays with 3D is a different thing, but know that 3D uses the language known substances. And when it comes to pharmaceuticals, the known substances is the pharmaceutical substance. So those are the seven different classifications of definition. Uh, we just mentioned this so that you understand that for certain things, you'll have to look into certain parts of the act. For certain things, you'll have to look outside the act into another act or into another treaty, or you may even not find that phrase used anywhere. So this just sums up the different types of definitions that we have. Now let's look at the types of definition. So we have just seen the classification. What are the types of definition? The first type that you will find is the, the definitions which start which starts with means or it starts with uh, meaning assigned to. Now these are the two different forms in which you find definitions. Uh, for instance, if you look at section 21J, invention means a new product or process involving an inventive step and capable of industrial application. So the means is a way to define what the definition is. So invention means. So this is one way uh, in which the Patent Patents Act defines, uh, defines the terms. 
The other way, you will also find this in section 21JA, inventive step means. Okay, so rather than saying inventive step can be defined as, this is a way in which the statutes are written. Inventive step means a feature of an invention. Now, there is also the usage of meaning assigned to it by a particular section. Now, you will find that in section 21W. Priority date has the meaning assigned to it by section 11. So, section 11, if you see section 11, you have to read the entire section 11 to understand what priority date means. Now, is there a difference between means and meaning assigned to? Largely, there is no difference. It's just a style in which things are presented. A meaning assigned to it by section 11 and means it is defined. Whereas meaning assigned to, it is referred to another provision. The meaning is largely one and the same. So this is one type of definition. The other type of definition that we find in the Patents Act in section 2 are the definition which begins with the word includes and the opposite of it does not include. Okay, there are two types of definitions. We categorize them in the same category. It's an including definition or a does not include definition. Now, for this, if you look at section 21AB, assignee is defined as assignee includes an assignee of an assignee and the legal representative of a deceased assignee and so on. And, and it will be important when we look in the next webinar, when we look at uh, section 6, this will again come up. So, we will look at this in greater detail then. So, this is the includes definition. Includes and it defines who are the people who are included into it. Uh, similarly, in section 21T, in section 21T, you will find a person interested. A person interested includes a person engaged in or in promoting research in the same field as that to which the invention relates. Now, these are the two types of includes definition. Now, you need to understand that when the Patent Act says it includes, it means it is an open definition. Okay, the definition can also include other things. For instance, if you look at a person interested, section 25.2 talks about a person interested. Okay, only a person interested can file a post-grant opposition. And similarly, section 64.1 also talks about person interested. It is only a person who, who is a person interested who can file for a revocation of a patent. And again, coming those who have a patents bear act, you will find that these references are given in the margin. A person interested, when it say it includes a person, person interested includes a person engaged in or promoting research. It means it includes that person. And it could also include other people. So here only research is mentioned, but the understanding is that it could also include other persons. We find the usage of does not include in section 21Y. True and first inventor does not include either the first importer of the invention or a person to whom an invention is first communicated. Now, we also have the use of definitions. As I said that the definitions are used with some purpose because if this, the meaning of certain terms are the same in the common understanding, then there is no need to define them. Say the district court for the purpose of Patents Act is the same as we understand in common parlance, like how people talk about a district court in your particular district, or if the definition of a high court is the same as a common man's understanding of what a high court is, there is no need to define it. So the use of definition broadly falls into two categories. So we use definitions one to expand the meaning and you will find instances of this in section 21T which I just mentioned person interested. Person interested includes a person engaged in or promoting research. You will find that a person interested includes a person engaged in or in promoting research in the same field as that to which the invention relates. So a person with a research interest is an interested person. A person with manufacturing interest, yes, he is an interested person, though it only says includes a person with research, which means 
anything that you have to do with a patent. Now you going back to the language of section 48, making, using, selling, offering for sale and importing. If you do all these activities and if you have a related interest in these activities, you will be an interested person. But here specifically research is mentioned because research is not covered in those five activities. So we understand that one of the uses of the definition is to expand the meaning and a person interested, they have expanded the meaning beyond the normal activities that are granted a right with a patent. So manufacturing, offering for sale, sale, use and import are the normal rights with a patent. But even if somebody does research, that person will be an interested person. The act also expands the meaning. If you look at section two, subsection two, okay, it states saying that in this act, unless the context otherwise requires any reference to the controller shall be construed as including a reference to any officer discharging the functions of a controller. So, so it expands the meaning. It says that controller means anybody who discharges the functions of a controller. Okay. Assistant controller or a person specifically appointed deputy controller. All of them are included. All they need to do is if they are discharging a function, they are treated as controller. So there is an expansion of the meaning in this section 2.2. Okay. We also find that the patent office shall be construed as including a reference to any branch of the patent office. Again, expansion of meaning. Patent office includes its branch. So the first use of a definition is to expand the meaning. And the second use is to restrict the meaning. Now you had already seen this. Uh, section 2.1.Y. True and first inventor. It says does not include. So the definition restricts the meaning. So who are the people who are not included? The first importer is not included. Similarly, a person to whom an invention is first communicated from outside India is also not the first uh, true and first inventor. So this is the second use of definition. It is used to restrict the meaning. <laughs>